In this video, we're going to take a look at differentiation from first principles. Now, differentiation from first principles is a formal introduction to differentiation. And what I've got here on the screen is a diagram that will help us understand how we actually derive the result differentiation from first principles. Now, to start with, what I'm going to do is just give the result for our differentiation from first principles. So that is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x and this is all over h okay so that's differentiation from first principles and this result looks maybe a little bit complicated maybe a little bit intimidating but it's actually not too bad so where does this result come from well so let's take a look at this diagram here and what i've got here is a curve so this this black line here this curve here this represents y equals f of x. Okay, so this is y equals f of x. This blue line here is a tangent to the curve at the point A. Okay, so that's this point A here. And I've also just picked a point here B on the curve y equals f of x. Now what I'm concerned about here is the value of the gradient um, of this curve at this point. Okay, so finding the gradient of the curve at this point. Now, for a straight line, that's nice and simple, but for something like this, when we've got a curve like this, this is quite complicated because obviously, depending on where you are on the curve, the value of the gradient will change, okay? So this is where differentiation from first principles comes into effect now. So let's just say this point here, A, has the x coordinate of x, okay? We're just thinking general terms now. So my x coordinate here, the point a this is x okay and if y is equal to f of x then this coordinate here for a so a will have coordinates x f of x okay if y is equal to f of x then the y coordinate will just simply be f of x okay now what i'm concerned about here is if i consider this point b if i was to do my normal triangle method of finding the gradient then that would give us an estimate, okay? But what I'm concerned about here is what happens as we get closer and closer to the point A. So what I've got here is a card for the points A and B, okay? But if I was to do another point here, say C, and connect A and C together, so we get a card here. So if I try that here, should be a straight line, but we get the idea. Then what would happen is we keep coming closer and closer to this point A. Well, in a moment, we'll explain why that, or what that actually does. Um, but let's just consider the point B here first. So the point B here, so B, well, from, so from the point A here to B, let's just say this is an increase of H, okay? H units. So this X coordinate will be X. That's gonna be X plus H there, okay? So in that case, the Y coordinate for B, so the y coordinate here, so the x coordinate is x plus h, and the y coordinate then will be f of x plus h, so that's f of x plus h, okay? So in that case, we could do our usual method here, you'd work out the triangle, so you'd work out the difference in the x coordinates essentially, um, work out the difference in the y coordinates, and then you do the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates, okay? But like we said, what we're concerned about here is how this changes as we keep getting closer and closer, okay, to that point A. Now, I've got my two points here, A and B. So to start with, let's just actually work out what the gradient would be. So if I say this is x1, and that's y1, then this must be x2, and that must be y2. Okay, so the formula for the gradient that you should be familiar with here is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so in that case y2 is f of x or f of x plus h so f of x plus h minus y1 so y1 is f of x so minus f of x and then this is divided by x2 that's x plus h minus x1 which is x okay so minus x and what we notice here is once we um, simplify the denominator here so that x cancels with this minus x here. I just get left with h in the denominator. 
And notice now, this result here that we've just found is pretty much the same as our result for differentiation from first principles. It's f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The only difference here is this limit. So what does this limit actually do? Well, what this limit does here is it gives us the behavior as we keep getting closer and closer to this point here. Okay. So in other words, what we're looking at is if we keep minimizing the value of h here until it essentially tends to zero, then that would give us the value of the gradient at that point. Okay. So the only thing left to consider then is therefore the limit as h tends to zero. So as h keeps getting closer and closer to its original point essentially here, then we get the result. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay. So to understand how this formula actually works then, I've got the difference in the y coordinates here as the numerator and then the denominator we just get left with h. So this was a difference in the x coordinates, but essentially the, the x is just cancel and I just get left with h. Okay. So that's the actual formula, but let's have a look now at how this works in um, practice, basically. So I've got a question here, hopefully nice and straightforward. All I want to do is prove from first principles that the derivative of 5x is 5. So what we need to do here is consider our result. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the result down to start with. So that's the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay. Now this result is given in the form of the book um, for edXL anyway, so you don't have to worry about memorizing it. But it is important to understand kind of why it works and how it works. Okay. So first thing we do here is we consider our x coordinate or our first pair of coordinates here. So if we've got our first coordinate here being x, okay, then if y is equal to 5x, then my y coordinate here will be 5x. Okay. So I hope that sounds um, intuitive. So we get 5x there. Now the next coordinate here, so if we just go back to this diagram, this is um, our point B now, okay? So it's x plus h. So we've moved h units along. So we're gonna do that here. So we get x plus h. So in that case, the y coordinate here now, in this case, will be five lots of x plus h, okay? So five lots of x plus h. So all I'm doing here now is just using this um, formula for the gradient again. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now you don't need to enter this much detail. I'm only doing this here just to kind of, again, just show why this works. So in this case, I'm going to get y2 as being this. So if I can just label them, I've got x1, y1, this will be x2, this will be y2. So in that case, y2, that's five lots of x plus h minus y1, which is 5x. And that's all over x2, so that's x plus h, and then minus x1 here, which is x, okay? In the denominator, they just cancel again, we just get left with h. So in the numerator, I'm gonna get five lots of x plus h, so that's 5x plus 5h minus 5x, and that's all, all over h here, okay? Now really what we should be also considering here, as we've already said, is the limit as we're going. So we need to consider the limit as h tends to zero. So we're looking for the limit as h tends to zero of this expression. Okay, so 5x plus 5h minus 5x all over h. Okay, now clearly the 5x's will cancel here. So what I get left with then is the limit as h tends to zero of 5h over h. Okay. What I'm going to do now is divide top and bottom here by h. So in that case, the h will just cancel here. And essentially all I just get left with is 5. Okay, which is what we wanted to show anyway. We were showing our proving from first principles that the derivative of 5x is 5. Okay. Now that was quite a straightforward example. Um, what we'll do now is we'll take a look at a slightly more complicated example. And I won't go into quite as much detail as we did here, showing the gradient. What I'm going to do is just go straight into the formula now for our differentiation from first principles. So 
This time we want to prove from first principles that the derivative of 4x squared is 8x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the coordinates again, just so we can see what we need to use. So I've got x, and um, that's going to be 4x squared, 4x squared. And then we're going to get the increase, so it's x plus h. And then my y coordinate here will be 4 lots of x plus h all squared. Okay. So now we just write the result for our differentiation from first principles. So that's the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. And this is all over h. Now remember the numerator here is the y2 minus the y1. Okay, so what I've got here now is the limit as h tends to 0 of y2, so 4 lots of x plus h all squared minus y1, so minus 4x squared. Okay, and this is all over h. So that's a kind of a quick way to tackle this rather than kind of going through the point of, you know, writing the gradient here. You don't have to do that. That is how the result works, but you don't have to show that. Okay. So now what I need to do is simplify the numerator here. So we've still got the limit as h tends to zero. I've got x plus h all squared here. So this is just double bracket. So just expand this and you're going to times it through by four. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave the 4 on the outside first just so you can see clearly what we've got here. So x plus h squared, that's going to be x squared plus 2xh, so 2xh, and then plus h squared, plus h squared, and then minus 4x squared. And this is all over h. So like you can see, as we work through these now, it's just a matter of simplifying. So I've got the limit again as h tends to 0. Multiply through by 4, so we get 4x squared. Um, that's going to be 8xh, so plus 8xh, and then 4h squared. And then finally, minus 4x squared. And it's all over h. So you don't have to do this quite in as many steps as I'm doing it as well. I just want to show each step as we go. So now what I want to do is get rid of this h in the denominator. So we're going to divide top and bottom here by h. Um, also, don't forget the 4x squared here cancel. So I get left with 8xh plus 4h squared over h. And we're taking the limit as h tends to 0. So if we cancel the h's here, what I get is the limit as h tends to 0. So I'm going to get 8x because the h is cancelled. So we get 8x. This would be just 4h. So that power of 2 there just becomes power of 1. So we get plus 4h. And what I need to do now is consider the behavior here as h tends to 0. So if you're not too familiar with the concept of limits here, what we're looking at is what actually happens as h gets very, very close to 0. So it doesn't actually become 0, but imagine it is just becoming very, very close to 0. Well, in that case, 4 lots of basically 0 would just be 0. Okay. So what I get left with then, just simply, ax okay so that gives us ax as we required okay that's what we were looking to prove and we've done it there okay and that gives us our solution to that example and we move on to the very last question here if you are feeling confident enough have a quick go at this um so make sure you write the result for differentiation from first principles um but if you're not feeling too confident just yet let's have a look at this together then so what I want to do here is prove from first principles that the derivative of 7x cubed is 21x squared. So again, this is just a matter of using differentiation from first principles. So let's just write down the coordinates. So I've got x, and then my y coordinate will be 7x cubed. We get 7x cubed. And then the next coordinate is when we have the increase. So that's going to be x plus h. And then my y coordinate here will be 7 lots of x plus h cubed. Okay, so 7 lots of x plus h all cubed. So now let's write the result for our differentiation from first principle. So this is the limit as h tends to 0 of um, f of x plus h. That's f of x plus h. 
minus f of x. That's all over, all over h. Okay. So remember the numerator here is y2 minus y1. So that's going to be my y2. That's going to be my y1. Okay. So in that case, we get the limit as h tends to zero. So that's going to be seven lots of x plus h cubed minus seven x cubed. Okay. Minus seven x cubed. And this will all be over h. Now, what I can see straight away here is there's going to be more work to this one because my bracket here has a power of three. So there's going to be more multiplication involved. To save time, what I would advise doing here is using the binomial expansion, but you don't have to if you want to expand this using three brackets. That is absolutely fine, um, but you'll just find it takes more time to actually do. So I've already done it using binomial expansion already just to save time. Um, but what you should get here, once you expand this using binomial expansion, I'll just write in the product of three brackets here. So we get the limit as h tends to zero. So I'll keep the seven on the outside just for now. So that's seven lots of x cubed. We get x cubed plus three h x squared. So three h x squared. We then get three h squared. So three h squared x. And then finally we get h cubed, so plus h cubed. And then don't forget the minus seven x cubed. Okay, and this is all divided by h. So what I need to do now is multiply through by the seven here with this bracket. So again, just a bit of work involved. So I'm gonna get seven x cubed. And that's gonna be 21 h x squared, so plus 21 h x squared. That's going to be 21 h squared x plus 21 h squared x. And then finally, that's going to be 7 h cubed. And then don't forget the minus 7 x cubed here at the end. And this is all over h still. Now, straight away, the 7 x cubed and the minus 7 x cubed will cancel. That gives me 0. And what I need to do now is divide top and bottom here by h. So, we're going to get the limit as h tends to zero. 21 h x squared, well, that h will disappear, so I'm going to get 21 x squared. And I'm going to get 21 h x plus 21 h x. And then 7 h cubed, that will become 7 h squared. Okay, so let's just double check I haven't made a mistake. Um, so 21 x squared, yeah. 21 h x, good. 7 h squared, perfect. So the only thing left to do here now is just consider the behavior of this limit. So as h tends to zero, so that's going to be 21 times a very, very small number. If, if it helps you think of it as zero, so 21 times zero, that'll just cancel, it just be zero. And then seven lots of zero squared, again, it would just be zero. That isn't technically what that limit is, but it, if it helps to understand how that limit works, then think of it like that. So in that case, what I get left with then is just simply 21x squared as we were asked to do here. Okay, so as required, that's our result proven there. Okay. And now we have it. Happy days. That's our solution. So that brings us to the end of this video on differentiation from first principles. In the next video, we're going to take a look at basic differentiation.